Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. Um, in this episode we're going to start in on creating a site module uh, for Joomla. This will be part 1. I don't know how many parts um, it will be in the end, but um, anyway, today my goal is to uh, show you uh, the very minimum, our basics, uh, to create a module for Joomla. So before we get started, uh, let's, let's uh, talk about when and how modules run. If you've watched the uh, Joomla 3x extension, or I'm sorry, uh, execution cycle video, or read that web page, uh, you learn that Joomla creates a J application site object, and then several methods are called. Uh, you know, it initializes it, routes it, dispatches it, and finally renders the application to the end user. It's during the render method that uh, the modules are run. Um, to determine which modules uh, be run, Joomla loads the template um, for the current menu link and gets a list of all the module uh, positions um, by gathering up the JDoc include tags. And to kind of give you an idea of there, if we uh, open up NetBeans and go to Templates, and I, I use Protostar, but if we open up the index.php and scroll through here, we will see um, some JDoc include tags. Here's one right here. And uh, the 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 uh, template JDoc include tags show where the component will go, where error messages go, where module positions are located, and that sort of thing. So, mod, uh, so Joomla will go through and collect all these JDoc include tags that have the attrib uh, attribute of module set on them. Okay. Um, like I said, these tags let uh, Joomla know what the module positions um, that are available uh, when the template's loaded and uh, what module positions are called, you know, what they're called, the name of them. Uh, for each module position in the template file, uh, Joomla will look at the current menu selection, uh, and that's identified by an item ID, and we'll go into that sometime. Uh, and it looks for a list of, of the modules that are enabled uh, for that menu selection, and uh, when it gets those, um, it grabs the module code and executes it and then backfills it into that module position. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about um, the layout, um, file layouts for a module. Uh, if we go to our JoomDev folder on the web, uh, on the uh, desktop where we installed our virtual host and open that up, we'll see uh, basically all the files and folders that are required for the site application. Uh, also, you know, we call it the front end. So the thing to notice here is there's a modules folder, okay? And if we open that up, this contains all of the modules that are installed on the front end. And we'll notice here that uh, all these modules are in a folder uh, with the name of mod underscore and then the name of the module. Uh, when we create uh, our own modules, we're going to follow the same convention uh, that Joomla does, and uh, uh, they will be created in a mod underscore and then the name of our component. For example, if we were to create a module called random quotes, it would be uh, installed in the modules folder in a folder called mod underscore random quotes. Okay, or if we created one called um, a lucky number where the module, let's say, d displays a random lucky number to our, our guest or our user, then that module would go in modules and then mod underscore lucky number. Um, so lastly, if we looked in um, uh, these folders, let's, let's take mod menu, we'll see that uh, there's a uh, a PHP file and an XML file uh, of the same name. Okay, so in mod menu we have mod underscore menu PHP. This is the file that will be executed when the module is run. And then there's mod underscore menu XML. And this file contains all the installation information that Joomla needed to install it. If uh, in, in our example, if we done uh, uh, mod uh, random quotes in in this folder we would see mod underscore random quotes PHP and mod underscore random quotes dot XML 
a lot of times you will see um, an, an index.html file in these folders. For example, we see it here in the modules menu. And the reason why those are there um, is it's essentially an empty uh, file um, with, in this case, just doc type, HTML, a title, tag, and that's it. And it prevents Apache from listing, doing a file listing of the files in a folder. So it's just a safety feature. Okay, so I think that's enough uh, information to kind of get started. So let's, uh, let's talk about the minimum requirements to install a module. So what are the absolute, what is the absolute least amount of work required to install a module in Joomla? Well, believe it or not, it's not much, okay? In order to install a module in Joomla, uh, we only have to create two files, okay? We have to create the um, PHP file that is called when the module is run, and we have to create a manifest file or an XML file that's used to actually install it. Okay, but before we do that, we need to um, determine, you know, what what do we want to call the module? Now, since this is a demonstration of just a very, uh, very, very uh, minimal amount of code to create a module, I'm just going to call mine smallest. Now, you can call yours anything you like, uh, but if you call it something different, remember that uh, you'll have to substitute your name uh, that you came up uh, with wherever it's required. Okay, so we're going to get started here. So what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to create a folder on my desktop and I'm going to call this uh, Joomla proje uh, Projects and I'm, this is where I want to keep uh, the extensions as we explore Joomla uh, all in, located in one place okay and I'm going to create another folder inside of here called mod underscore mm, I think I want to call mine smallest okay so this is the this is a, the smallest module I can think of and and by naming using the naming convention that Joomla uses I know that when I go into my Joomla projects folder and I see mod underscore underscore smallest first of all I know that this code is for a module and the name of it is the smallest so I know it's not very creative but I have a sort of a twisted sense of humor so so I'm gonna open this folder and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create um, two files here. Okay, uh, the first one is the uh, applicate or is the uh, extensions uh, entry file. In this case, I'm going to create a new empty document, and we're going to call it mod underscore underscore smallest dot php. And uh, remember, I'm following the naming convention. So if you use something other than um, smallest, if you're following along, it would be mod underscore whatever name that you selected. Okay, so this empty file, we're going to open it and edit it. I'm just going to edit it with gedit. Now we do have um, we do have uh, NetBeans installed, but we'll we'll cover adding our project to NetBeans at a later date. So we need uh, a PHP tag here, and the only thing I want to put here is an echo statement, and I want to say um, welcome to my module. So when the module runs and, it, and Joomla runs my module and it executes this PHP script, it's going to display the, the text, Welcome to my module. So I'm going to save that and we're done with that file. That was simple. Now the other file we need is the uh, manifest file or the install file sometimes it's called. And So we're going to create a new empty document here. And we're going to call the same name mod underscore smallest dot XML. So the XML file, uh, like I said, controls um, how Joomla installs an extension. So we're going to open this here to edit. And you want a plain text editor. You don't want to use like LibreOffice or Microsoft Word or anything like that. So the first thing we're going to do is. Um, We this is an XML file, so we have to tell um, the application that we're dealing with here is an XML file. So this is uh, uh, XML, okay. The version that we're using um, is 1.0, okay. And the encoding that we're using for this file is UTF-8. All right. 
So um, the UTF is uh, it's the uh, encoding that the characters are uh, uh, encoded in. In this case, it's an 8-bit uh, character code. So um, the next thing that we need is uh, uh, we need to tell uh, Joomla that uh, this is, a, is an extension. So we'll create the extension tag, okay? And of course, you know, I always try to uh, close tags as I open them. So we have an open extension and a close extension tag. So the extension tag takes a certain um, has contains certain attributes that we need to uh, provide so Joomla will know what we're dealing with. The first is type. So the type attribute um, tells Joomla the type of extension that we're installing. In this case I'm doing a module. Okay. If it were a component it would be component. If it were a plugin it would be plugin. If it were a template it would be template. So you, you kind of get the idea there. And then version is the version of Joomla that we're developing for. In our case we're developing for version 3.5. Um, I thought at one time that if the version number of the component was greater than the version number of uh, Joomla that it would fail, but uh, doing some tests I discovered that uh, that's not exactly the case. And then we need to tell it uh, where the um, extension is going to be installed. Well, the client in this case is um, this is a site extension, so it's a front-end extension module. Uh, if we were writing an extension or a module or something for the back-end, the client would be set to administrator. Okay, And then finally, the method. So the method of installation uh, can be install or upgrade and in our case uh, we're going to use upgrade and the difference is in uh, if you're doing an install or in, you know uh, installation um, method if the component or the module is already installed and you try to install it again you'll get an error uh, uh, Joomla will bail out on you if on the other hand it's an upgrade the upgrade method will overwrite any existing files uh, even if it's already installed and sometimes that's kinda handy if if you've been in there playing around with uh, the PHP files or something like that and you just you just want to refresh the copy of the extension so that's uh, that's the main body of what we need for uh, Joomla to know what it's installing okay uh, the next uh, tag that we need is name. Now name, um, let me close my tag here, uh, name gives the name of the component. Now even though this tag isn't um, ex expressly you know, mandatory, you need to put it in here because if you leave the name out uh, when you install your uh, extension when you install your module you'll discover that the module uh, has no uh, clickable title in order to to manage it so that we have to put this in here and I'm gonna call mine uh, smallest module oops and uh, you can put whatever you know whatever you want to name your um, module in here uh, doesn't matter. One thing that we will uh, learn in future videos is that when it comes to internationalizing your extensions, um, what the name that you give it and the description become very important because they translate into language strings. But for now we're just going to simply do it this way. And then finally uh, we have to tell Joomla what files are going to be installed. So we have a files um, tag here and then inside the files tag we tell it the file names of the uh, files that we want to install so we have file name and the first file is mod underscore smallest dot php and then the second file is file name mod 
smallest dot XML. Okay, so we're almost done, but we have to make uh, we have to add an attribute uh, to one of the file names, and the attribute is for the uh, will go on the file that is executed when the module runs. So we need to add here module equals quote quote, and then the module is mod underscore smallest. So let me explain what this module tag does. First of all, it, Joomla does three things basically with this this tag here. Uh, first of all, when the module is installed, it will create a folder underneath uh, modules with this name. So it, you know, we'll, in our site directory in our modules folder, when it's installed, we'll, we'll see a mod um, underscore smallest folder. Okay. It also tells uh, Joomla that the XML file um, will use the same name. So whenever we create the XML file using the module tag, we have to use the same name. So mod underscore smallest dot XML. And finally, the file that we're expressing here, this mod underscore smallest dot PHP, tells it that that is the file that we're going to execute for this module. And again, Joomla expects the file name to be the same as the value of this attribute. So uh, when we looked at the uh, file layout in the beginning of this video and we've seen you know mod underscore menu mod underscore you know um, latest users that sort of stuff that's kind of a convention that's uh, used now I, I would like to clarify that uh, uh, this you don't have to do that we could have just I could have just called uh, this mod smallest right but if I would have done that Joomla expects the XML file to be called smallest and the file that executes the um, module to be called smallest and as a result because the folder name that Joomla creates when you set this attribute it will just be called smallest and and uh, you can do that it, it doesn't really matter but uh, the convention is that we prefix it with mod so that's that's why I left that like it is so um, that's pretty much all the basic information that we need. That's the bare minimum to create uh, 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 an extension, a module, in this case for Joomla. So we're going to save this file and close it. So now, how do we how do we install it? Well, it's super simple. We're going to take these two files and we're going to compress those into a zip file. Now, whatever you, it doesn't matter what you call the zip file. You can call it Binky the Clown. You can call it uh, my super duper first module or whatever. I tend to uh, name mine with the uh, convention where the first three letters are the type of extension like mod for module, com for component, plg for plugin, underscore and then the name of it and then I, I will usually add a version number on the end of it. Uh, this one's not version, we'll talk about versioning uh, in, a, in a separate tutorial. So I'm going to create the zip file and so now we have uh, uh, this archive, this mod undercore smallest dot zip that contains these two files. So to install it, uh, it's actually uh, pretty pretty simple. We're going to go to our Joom dev uh, site and the administrator on the back end and we're going to log in. I believe I set mine to admin admin because uh, this is development. No one's uh, going to be on here. To install it, we're going to go to extensions manage and install and then we're going to uh, browse for the package that we created and on the desktop we have uh, Joomla projects mod smallest and there's the zip file that I just created so I'll open that and then I'm going to say upload and install now if everything went good we'll get a message that says hey the installation of this module was successful but we're not quite done so the modules installed but we got to be able to um, display it so to do that, we're going to go to uh, Extensions and Modules, and we're going to look for uh, the module we just created. Now it will be in the list under the title of whatever name you gave it in the XML file. Recall that I called mine Smallest Module. So I'm going to click on the name so that we can go to the Edit screen. And we have to do three things. First of all, we have to publish the module, so we're going to change the status from Unpublished to Publish. 
we have to provide a menu position or module position to uh, place the module in. Now I'm using the Protostar uh, template uh, on my dev server so I want to choose right. So it'll be on the right hand side of Protostar uh, it's published and then finally we need to go to the menu assignments. Now recall that uh, modules are displayed based on what menus they've been uh, uh, assigned to. So in my case I'm going to say on all pages so no matter what menu item is cl clicked uh, and selected that Joomla will display this module on that page. So with all of that in place I'm going to hit save and close so now let's go to the front end and check out our handiwork. So if I go to the front end and I hit the home link, bang, there it is. There's our module, smallest module. Welcome to my module so we know that our PHP script is running and, and we're good to go. So that's the absolute smallest amount of code that you can write um, to, uh, to get a, a module installed in, in uh, Joomla. Now I do want to back up here and, and if you installed your uh, module and you've got uh, some sort of error uh, the, mo the thing to check would be your most likely would be the file names of your files make sure that uh, they're correct and then your um, XML file is probably where you know the problem is going to happen and what I've discovered is that um, usually I either I have uh, something mistyped in my file list, okay, uh, or I've I've this is different than that, or I got a quote or something off. It's most likely in your XML file. Double check it, save any changes that you make. But remember, you're going to have to rezip this stuff. So you know you'll have to delete your old archive, and you're going to have to come back over here and 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 make a new archive of your new files and then go back and install it again. So you'll probably discover that, you know, it was just a typo. I, I do it all the time because I'm a crummy programmer. The other thing is if uh, you, you know, you hit your home link and we, and it does, your module doesn't show up, chances are you got one of your module settings wrong. Go back uh, to the, to the module by extensions, modules, select your module, mine was smallest module, and make sure that it's published that it has a uh, module position in the template that you're using because I've I've picked before you know module positions from another template when I'm even running that template so I've done it all and make sure that menu assignment is set to on all all pages so with that in mind um, the one other thing that I want to mention the XML file if we go back and take a look at that we look at the file names here so we have uh, two files that are being sold uh, mod smallest uh, PHP which we know is the entry file for the module and mod smallest.xml and Joomla uses this to install and I believe uses the same file to uninstall we technically don't have to include this here in the file list Joomla will copy it over anyway but I just think that it's clear uh, and reminds us that this file is in fact being copied over even though if we didn't include it Joomla would uh, copy it over anyway so congratulations uh, you know you've created your first uh, uh, module for Joomla I know it's really simple and there's a whole lot more that can be done uh, but hey look it's still a module and it still runs in Joomla so until I do the next tutorial uh, play with this uh, PHP file uh, make changes to it and uh, um, add add you know something there that's meaningful to you or to your user and or if you're uh, if you're a good PHP programmer you probably already have ideas like maybe you're g gathering a um, uh, a stock quote or something like that and you're you're doing uh, calls there's plenty of things that you can do um, so in the next uh, tutorial uh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of ex expand a little bit probably not on um, this particular one. I'm going to create a, a new module, something a little more oriented toward uh, what we're trying to do. But we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about uh, the manifest files. The manifest file we 
uh, only barely scraped the surface. There's uh, lots of things that can go in here, particularly uh, the section up here where all this metadata goes that uh, gives the name, the description of the module, the author, and all that sort of stuff, and where it shows up uh, when you install it. Uh, to get a head start, if you uh, open up your browser and go to uh, docs.joomla.org uh, manifest files, um, you'll see um, a, an article here that describes and talks about the manifest files and what the different different things in it mean. Um, so if you if you want to read that, you'll be uh, you'll be ahead of the curve. Um, so this is the end of this tutorial, uh, this episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, remember that you can come over to uh, myheap.com. I'm uh, on Technology Joomla. Uh, you can hit Contact Us uh, and send me an email, and I'll be happy to um, uh, answer any questions if I'm capable. Uh, another thing is uh, the episode guide. Uh, as the episodes uh, become available, be listed here, you could watch any of these that you want. Um, if you go to the uh, page you can see that you can download a PDF version of, of this page of, of this uh, episode uh, to work at your own pace if that'll help. Uh, again I apologize for the uh, stuttering and stammering. I'm, I'm not a very good speaker and, and I'm kind of a new programmer myself uh, but I want to share what I've learned. I think uh, Joomla is an exciting product um, and a lot of neat things can be written for it. So until next time, have a blessed day.